seven o'clock and we have uh, one, two, three, four, five board members. So we're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Um, uh, we have the applicants and the applicants representative. Um, Barbara, what is your interest in this application? Um, my husband and I are adjacent landowners. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let me uh, call this meeting to order. This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Town of Berlin Development Review Board. We have one application before us tonight. It's an application by Christina Cassegren for a conditional use review of a request under Section 2108C for additional use of rural enterprise associated with uh, existing agricultural land. Um, so um, uh, we're going to hear that application as a conditional use. Uh, and uh, I'd like to do is start the meeting off by um, uh, asking anybody that wishes to give testimony in this uh, matter tonight to please raise your right hand. Hey, uh, Bob, you may want to talk to Barbara about her rights as a I was going to do, yeah, let me, Barbara, if, if you, uh, uh, you're, you're here, you're a buddy property owner. Are you interested in being an interested party to this hearing? Interested party is a party that has uh, the right to testify, uh, although we would hear anything you want to say regardless, uh, and also has the right to appeal the decision of the Development Review Board if you disagree with the decision of the Development Review Board. So uh, an interested party status gives you a legal status in, in the hearing process, especially as it applies to appeals. Are you interested in being an interested party? Or are you just so listening it, in? Um, I was invited to this um, as we are adjacent landowners, but I don't think that I have any objection to this. I would like to hear what's going on. Um, okay. And well, you can always change your mind, and, and if you want to be an interested party, but if you want to testify at all or you want to say anything, I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand and be sworn in. Okay? All those, attend to, all those, all those of you that intend to give testimony in this matter before the board tonight, wow, I'll get it straight here, yeah. In the matter before this board tonight, please raise your right hand. I just want to tell the truth and nothing but the truth in the matters before this board tonight under penalties of perjury. I do. Dan, yeah, it's not necessary for you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, so um, uh, it's, it's our custom to start an application like this by asking for an overview by the applicant, um, and but uh, an overview strictly because we'll get into the details when we review the individual criteria. Uh, and the same thing for anybody that has questions. Uh, uh, we. Just want to get a general picture of what's 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 before us tonight. I think we all know, but um, well, I'm going to ask the applicant to give us that general picture. Uh, um, sure. Christina, are you going to be doing the testimony, or will Dan be leading this for your team? Um, I believe Dan will lead. Works. Yes, I'll be I'll be happy to take the lead, Mr. Chair. Um, okay, and the floor is yours. Uh, if you would give us sort of an overview of this application. Uh, and then we'll delve into the individual criteria that you've given us. Sure, thank you very much um, and members of the DRB. Uh, I'll start off by simply noting that um, this application is not seeking to change anything that exists on the ground today um, with one small exception that I'll get to in, in a moment. So the parking area, the building, the use, the hours uh, are all going to stay as they are, have been uh, historically. This is an as-built uh, project. We're simply looking to uh, do a couple of things. One is to come into compliance uh, with the town and to make sure that uh, the zoning classification fits the use, as well as uh, create a zoning classification that, a fit, that fits the emerging and sort of uh, future use that we're projecting for this particular uh, project. So I'll start with an overview um, Ms. Castrogren owns um, several hundred acres uh, of land, but we're really only going to be focusing on, and, and Tom, do I have the ability to share screen? You do, yes, sir. Great. Uh, let me share um, just because I want to focus on, oops, let me stop sharing for a second uh, and make sure that I have... 
So I'm going to start out with a, a picture of, of the particular site that we're looking to uh, talk about. So, as you'll see, um, this is Route 12 um, that runs across the frontage of the property. Crozier Road is a discontinued class, uh, I believe, class three road that was discontinued in the 70s. Um, and there's a parking area here that's been in existence. And there's what's referred to as the crush house right here. Um, and this is this area is the really the area that we're looking to cover with this zoning application. So this is a, uh, a mixed use application. And let me begin by saying that most of the property is not looking to be reviewed in this application. The, the, the vineyard, Ms. Castrogren's house, the forest land, that's all going to stay the same. Um, we're only looking for this particular area right here. And under your zoning bylaws, under section 2005, it allows for multiple uses on a single property. So we're really only looking for this crush house, the parking lot, and really the immediate uh, immediate area that serves this crush house. Um, so the yard that's around it, we're not looking to go up into these vineyard fields that you can see up uh, above. We're not looking to go um, in, into any other area but this, this immediate area that will serve for this rural enterprise use. So let me give you sort of a historic overview of the, of the use of this, which is that, um, and let me, actually, let me show you on this exhibit um, a little bit more. Uh, this, is, this is our exhibit E, and it shows on a section of a survey uh, really uh, a good sense of the area. You can see there's the crush house right here. There's a patio off of it. There's a walkway to the parking area, the solar panels, um, and and then the, the, the discontinued road that goes out to Route 12 uh, for entrance and exit to the property. Um, So what we are looking to do um, is really the historic use of the property. Um, so Ms. Ms. Castigren purchased this property um, in 2002, and it's a 2,000 acre property. I, I was understating by quite a bit. Um, <laughs> and most of it is enforced. Most, and there's a section that has been uh, cultivated as a vineyard. Um, there's a portion that uh, supports her house and barn. Um, and then um, this crush house that sits below. Um, and this crush house was constructed, uh, I believe, in uh, the end of 2006. Christina, am I remembering that correctly? I think it's 2009. 2009. I apologize. Um, that's why you're here <laughs> to fact check. Um, <laughs> But uh, the crush house has always been an integral part of the agricultural use of this property. Uh, Ms. Castigren started Fresh Tracks Farm um, with the vineyard and has been producing wine at, at the site uh, since, since 2006. Um, and that's the 2006 I was thinking of. Um, and this crush house is where the wine is processed where it's stored uh, and where there's retail space for people to come purchase bottles of wine, taste wine, um, you know, have cheese and uh, cracker plates, uh, have small receptions there. Um, but it has been, so it's been a retail space. It's been, a, it's, a, it's an integral part of the actual uh, vineyard agriculture uh, space. So it's it's always been tied to the vineyard itself, and we're not looking to change that. Um, what we are looking to do, and, and when, when it was erected, um, our view was that it was part of the agricultural use. Um, and, and, and certainly to the extent that this was built uh, to process all of the grapes that were uh, grown on the property, um, 
you know, we felt it was consistent with Act 250 um, that it was uh, an agricultural use. Uh, but there's always been a small retail component that's been tied to the farm. Uh, she's had uh, tour groups uh, come in to do wine tastings. Um, and these, these hours have been largely limited to the daytime. It's always been uh, something that would close at 8 p.m. Uh, might open as early as 10 a.m. Uh, and that's not anything we're looking to change. Uh, so the back of the, the back of the crush house is uh, primarily not open to the public because it is a, um, it is a processing place for the wine uh, for it's either it's processing or storage. Um, and it's really the front portion of that, that octagon um, that has a reception area and retail space. So under your zoning bylaws, you have what's known as a rural enterprise under section 3117 that's allowed in this district. And it, the, it states that the purpose is to recognize that Vermont's rural areas are characterized by working landscapes where resource-based economic activities have traditionally flourished. The purpose of this section is to accommodate rural enterprises that support economically viable farms and or forest lands in town and region by, and then it lists four things that can do, adding value to local farm or forest products, direct marketing of local farm or forest products, engaging in agritourism or education, and or offering goods or services needed for farming or forestry. So what has clearly, uh, we would put forward that the historic use of this falls under that rural enterprise use. And, and what Ms. Castigren is hoping to do is, you know, obviously in a, this post COVID world, um, you know, she's looking to figure out how does her business survive? How does the farming enterprise that she's established survive? Uh, and one of the things she wants to diversify is the retail offerings potentially at the, uh, at the crush house to be offering things that aren't necessarily the, the wine she makes or that she, um, the related uh, items such as corkscrews and glasses that are related to the wine. Um, what she'd like to be able to do is some limited retail in that space, um, preferably favoring, um, you know, the type of Vermont based products. Um, but regardless of which would continue to do the uh, crush house function, the wine sales um, in the area, but, but diversify. So given that, um, we believe that this use would still fall under the rural enterprise in that it would be the direct marketing of local farm uh, or forest products. Um, it would be adding value to her farm um, and it would be engaging in agritourism uh, or education in that anyone who comes into the crush house, regardless of what they purchase, would still be um, on the farm, would be, you know, seeing the oak casks that the wine is stored in um, and, and be shopping or experiencing uh, this as they have been um, on a farm type setting. So that's, that in a nutshell is what we're looking to do. And, and we believe the rural enterprise designation that um, that the town has in its zoning bylaws allows that. Um, we're only looking for this very narrow uh, section of land. We're not looking to change the, the 2000 acres. And, and really we're not looking for any type of changes to the, uh, the structure, it's ours, the parking lot, the entrance, the exit. You know, this has all existed since 2009. Um, it has worked well. We're unaware of any complaints from uh, neighbors or the town as to uh, flow of traffic or uh, mm -hmm. use. it's closed at 8 p.m. We're not looking to extend those hours. Um, the one change that we are looking to do is, um, and I'll call this, I'll share this screen, is the, um, the, the sign, the existing sign, and, and part of our application is to recognize our is to get approval for the Fresh Tech Tracks sign. Um, but if you'll notice here um, down below, this is bottom lip signage. Um, and I understand that uh, in, in reviewing the bylaws, that's not allowed under the current zoning bylaws. Um, and what we would propose to change is to remove this bottom lip and replace it with a, a uh, uh, 
top lit sign so that the light would cast down as opposed to up and be in compliance with the zoning bylaws. And so that's literally the one change that we're proposing. Um, we would seek approval for the sign. As you can see, uh, it's a wooden sign. Um, it's well made, it's tasteful. Um, you know, it's set back from the road. Um, it's in compliance with the size requirements. And, you know, I'm not gonna go into necessarily much, much more detail. Uh, I'll ask if the, to let the board have any questions if they, if they have any, um, but, uh, you know, all of the setbacks and frontage requirements uh, we believe are satisfied. Uh, we believe that, you know, with the entrance and exit, with the discontinued road, um, there's certainly wide enough uh, size of uh, the right of way and access points. This simply hasn't been a, a problem that we're aware of. There's a, a fully established curb cut with this road. Um, and uh, again, this is something that has been really road tested for the past 12 years and has not created any issues within the neighborhood. Um, it's certainly part of this ongoing farming operation and looks to continue to do that. And that's simply what we look for that approval from this board for. Thank you, so, Dan. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm gonna ask if the uh, board members have any questions uh, of a general nature for the applicant. I do. Yes, Polly, go ahead. Okay, so Dan, just a couple of clarifications. So the sign is existing. You would just be changing the lighting. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. The other question is I'm not clear in terms of what kinds of products that that Christina wants to be selling. Sure. And I'll, I'll let Christina talk uh, to clarify this. But, you know, part of this is we don't know um, because we're still exploring. Uh, I know Christina is still exploring what this is going to look like on the other side uh, of, of COVID. Um, you know, so I think she's looking into partner with people um, that would be able to provide that. Obviously there's the, the space itself. So we're not gonna be bringing in tractor equipment to sell on the, on the front lawn. Um, but, uh, you know, this would probably be an expansion of the retail operations in, in logical ways. Um, but we don't, we don't have specific items. It's not as if she's gonna start carrying, you know, a line of cookware. Um, but she may, um, and it, depending on, on, on really what the market will bear. Okay. But, but things like farm products or something like that, or. We'd, we'd look to the rural enterprise, uh, for guidance in that. Um, but I think regardless of the items, you know, what we're, what we are proposing is that this would essentially, these retail items would be subservient to the larger function of the crush house as an agricultural uh, site. This is, this is really um, for the vineyard, the final, final stop on the agricultural product line. And so it's still going to be the crush house. It's not going to, we're not looking to change this into a, a retail showroom per se. The retail is just simply going to support the, uh, the crush house functions. Okay, thank you. Any other questions Gen of a net general nature? Because we're going to go through the, some of the review criteria, but uh, that's a good question, Polly. Uh, anybody else have a question uh, from the board? Um, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Barbara, Menard, did you have any questions for the applicant of a general nature at this time? No, I don't. Okay. Um, Tom, uh, Mr. Zoning Administrator, do you have any comments you wanted to add at this point? No, I will have some during Ms. Uh, uh, Mr. Richardson's presentation. Okay. In that case, I'm, I'm going to somewhat, um, unless there are issues uh, that people have in having reviewed the material, I'm probably going to move quickly through this. Um, since it, there are no changes proposed to what's there, but it's, but it's a permitting process. Uh, uh, we, we know what's there, There's, so it's not, not, not guessing work here. Um, I think that the issue is, uh, uh, does it qualify as a rural enterprise? Uh, that's sort of the first issue that is there. Um, I have looked at the standards. Um, uh, you're all familiar with them. Uh, I, I, does anybody have any question with regard to it being a, a, a legitimate rural enterprise? 
No. If there, I'm sorry, I didn't give everybody a chance to say yes or no. <laughs> no. <laughs> if, if there are no questions, then I'm, I'm going to move on uh, uh, to the um, uh, criteria. You grouped a lot of them, uh, Dan. Uh, I'm going to sort of hit them individually just so that we our, our, our background covers them. Um, the, um, we'll start with the site plan criteria, which you also started with those. And that really starts with parking. Um, and you've given us a pretty good narrative on that, but I, just paraphrase for us, Dan. Sure. Um, just the uh, property is frontage on Route 12, uh, parking lots off Crozier Road, the former Class 3. Um, it has approximately 47 spaces that exceeds the minimum parking requirements um, by 26 spaces. And historically, parking has never been a problem at the site. Uh, and the curb cut equals or exceeds the minimum length and the B71 standard. Um, then there is uh, more than sufficient circulation for cars entering and exiting both the lot and the parking spaces. Um. I'll bring up one thing here quickly, um, and, and uh, we have some latitude here. Our bylaws call for paving of parking of more than 20 spaces, um, unless there's intermittent use. Um, could you speak to that? Did you notice that in our bylaws? Sure, I, I, um, I, I did not, and I would have further. I apologize. But you know, the use here is fairly light. Um, this is an agricultural setting. It is, and uh, you know, it is not a heavily used parking lot. By having the sort of uh, hard packed uh, parking <clears throat> area, it, it allows it to retain a, a rural character in in, in conformity with the surrounding landscape, as well as um, you know, more than adequate for for the parking. And and simply, the traffic is not what I would consider heavy. It's very light retail. Um, and there are long gaps of time, particularly in the off season when uh, traffic is very low. Um, it does exceed the minimum requirements by, as you pointed out, 26 spaces, but that's not more than double the minimum requirements. So, um, uh, and, and you know, I, I think that's acceptable from my perspective. Does anybody have any questions with regard to that? Mr. Chair? Yes, Tom. I, I not not for with respect to parking, but I just want to confirm that that I spoke to uh, Mr. Brian McAvoy from uh, VTrans. Uh, it's a Route 12 is a state highway, and I asked them if VTrans had any concerns with the access off of Route 12 for this project, and he said VTrans has no outstanding issues with that access. Thank you. Thank you. Anything on, on any questions for the applicant on parking? No. Sort of group together parking, circulation, and snow storage, uh, uh, which sort of tend to all go together. Um, uh, any questions with regard to uh, circulation, uh, which goes to what Tom just spoke of, which is the access from Route 12? Um, if none? So right. if the, so, I'm assuming this road is maintained by you, Christina. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I when I see see former town highway. I assume that you must be. <laughs> yeah, well, that was thrown up a long time ago. So I maintained that. Okay. I, you mentioned Dan. This was thrown up back in the '70s, but it was thrown up uh, frequently when towns throw things up. They throw them up as trails, or they throw them up as class four roads. Or did they just throw it up? Period, entirely. They just threw, threw it up entirely. And going back, I actually looked at the the um, Vermont Highway maps for Berlin, um, and I believe the last one was somewhere in 1972 um, that showed this as a Class Three road. Um, and then in 1980, it was marked as discontinued. Okay. Uh, Others, other have been left as class four or have left it as trails. I, I wasn't sure about this one here. Uh, it doesn't materially change that. But, um, okay, any any other questions on parking, circulation, snow storage? Certainly plenty of room for snow storage. Okay. Um, the, um, and we'll probably need it tomorrow. <laughs> Stop it. 
Yeah, we hope not. <laughs> okay, and again, you've grouped a few things here, landscaping, lighting, setbacks, and outdoor space. Um, um, I want to ask you to um, uh, speak to uh, landscaping quickly, individually. Sure. Um, it, simply, the site has been landscaped to reflect its agriculture and rural setting. Um, as you can see from uh, the exhibits and the pictures, um, it's largely open field uh, around the building with um, some plantings done to uh, adjacent to the building, uh, but largely mimicking the sort of rural past pasture uh, appearance that's across the road and um, alongside in other areas. Um, any questions on landscaping? Okay. Hearing none, um, and and you're you're welcome to Barbara ch chime in, Barbara, if you have a question. Thank you. Um, the um, lighting. Sure, there's existing lighting. Uh, this includes five 15 foot full cutoff light poles along the edge of the parking area. The building has two scone. I think I wrote my application as scone lights, but I meant sconces. Uh, light fixtures under the roof and small twinkle light strands under the roof over overhang in the immediate yard area surrounding the crush house that I think are removed on a seasonal basis. Um, no new lighting is proposed. Um, this has been satisfactory. If you ever pass by, you can see this is a pretty low, uh, low lit area. Um, I mean, it's obviously lit safely for uh, pedestrians and, and traffic entering and exiting the, the building. Um, but the lights are, of course, turned off when the building is not in use. And that, that the lighting was quite, for, I was just going to say the lighting for the sign is, of course, the one that we're proposed to change uh, to an over a downcast light. Okay. Um, your, your text does not address shutoff time for the um, uh, parking lot lighting. Um, what is your proposal? With regard to turning off the lights in the parking lot when close of business at eight o'clock yes will that be on a timer or just turned off turned off by staff christina do you we're working on that one we have a photo eye so it should shut off when it gets dark actually um it's been problematic but um it is possible for us to do it at a specific time but of course, we haven't really been open because of the pandemic, so they've just been off. So this would be a kind of relighting of the lights, so we can we can make sure that they go off as soon as the staff members, you know, safely in their car or ready to go. Yeah. So, hour after close of business, something like that. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Thank you. Yeah, um, I might suggest a timer. That's. I mean, you have really they're on photo cells, so they don't come on. They don't come on until it's um, dark. But you do want yeah. them to, you do want them to turn off when you're done for the day, right? Um, so, if that's acceptable to you, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Um, the uh, other questions besides mine with regard to lighting. The. Um, are there any other lights besides uh, the pole lights? You have lights on the buildings, exterior lights on the building, entrance like entrance there are light. Several soffit lights. Okay. A few downcast lights on the outside, and then one light, uh, string light in the front. If you drive by, well, you could see it when we were open. So there are a few, like one set of string lights and several yeah. soffit lights that come underneath the roof that overhangs the front of the building. And then in the back, which you can't see, is of course a spotlight where I park or staff goes, and that's on a that will just come on when you pull in, and that's so you can put the key in the door. But that's in the back. So you'll have no nighttime security lighting or anything like that. It's interior, so um, so there's some lighting in there to try to see with the camera. Okay. Um, any other questions on lighting? Uh, if not, I'm going to move on to uh, signs. And you've already addressed the signs as existing sign, and you propose to change the lighting on the sign. Any questions on lighting on the sign? 
Are there no comments or questions? I'm going to move on. Quickly. A lot of pages. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a sign on the building? Um, there's sort of a logo burned into a piece of wood, but there's no writing on it. Um, so it doesn't, there's no wording on it and it's quite small. So I don't know if that would, it's about this big. Not sure that that would count. And I should, I'd like to back up if that's okay. Can we return to lighting for a moment? I think those yeah. soffit lights do stay on at night because the cameras don't catch anything. So I was wrong about that. The soffit down lights around the building, I believe we leave them on or the camera wouldn't catch anything. So those have historically always been on at night. And I apologize, I missed that. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, the, so the, the logo technically is a sign. How, how big would you say it is? Oh, probably about 12 inches wood. We made it ourselves. It's pretty simple. You might not identify it as anything, but it's it's above when you walk in. To be honest with you, I don't remember seeing it. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I remembered it just now and sort of forgotten about it myself. <laughs> okay. But we'll make that part of your application. And it's likely a piece of art as well, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the... Um, you do have some temporary signs uh, at your facility frequently, mm -hmm. and there is subject. There are specific rules under this this um, uh, air culture uses that there are specific rules on that. Um, uh, you, you need to observe those. I, I don't know. Do we do permit those, Tom, or are they just soon be follow the guidance? Follow the guidance that the town is in the process of developing a, a, a licensure for that, but we're not there yet. Okay. So it's it's out it's outlined in back in the, that section 317 or whatever it's 3117. Um, so um, what's allowed is I, my observation is you have not not necessarily exceeded that, but um, just something you need to watch. Uh, I think it allows up to six temporary signs. I don't know that I've ever seen six temporary signs there. Um, Okay. Yeah. The um, uh, you've indicated that you do have wastewater and water permits. You've had them for quite quite some time. Uh, and then you've outlined that where your stormwater goes. Uh, anybody question on again? They've been sort of grouped together, but the water, wastewater, or stormwater. If not, uh, I'd like to move to the conditional use criteria. And um, uh, perhaps Dan, quickly, if you just sort of run through that for us. Sure. Um, you have in your text. I'll be happy to do that. So uh, the can the use uh, as it has been and as we expect it to continue um, has not impacted the community facilities or utilities. Won't have an impact on local schools, parks, water, or sewage systems, or transportation infrastructure, or any of the city services. Uh, or town services. Um, traffic at the site has consistently been at a low level. Um, as an agricultural retail operation, it has 10 years of ha traffic history, which have not generated complaints or issues with traffic on Route 12 or at the surrounding properties. The number of trips has been uh, and ex is expected to remain well below the 75 um, that would otherwise trigger a traffic study. Um, I think as, as, as Tom had indicated, uh, the entrance and exit is in conformance with the state's uh, standards, or at least it is an acceptable level um, as far as an entrance and exit off of this. Um, the change is unlikely to affect the character, you know, any, any classification that's given permit by the board tonight is unlikely to change or affect the character of the area. As we've indicated, it's been operating for 11 years any of the re retail is going to fit really within the existing use. And unless you go inside would probably unlikely to be noticed by any neighbors or any other uh, individuals in the area. Um, you know, it's a modestly scaled business and building. It's tied to the agricultural operations of the farm. Uh, we're not looking to subdivide this off of, uh, of the property. It will continue to be part of the 
um, part of the farm operations. The hours of operation are consistent with historic use as well as uh, residential use, which is, you know, by closing at eight, um, it will be quiet, presumably, you know, within the hour, if there's any, any noise at, at all. Um, this is generally generated very low levels of noise. There's not smoke or other uh, effluent in, in air. Um, so it's largely been a, a fairly low impact uh, on the neighborhood. Um, and the property itself is surrounded by fields and agriculture. There aren't particularly close neighbors nearby to the actual crush house itself um, that might be uh, affected in a, in a tighter knit neighborhood or a tighter packed neighborhood. Um, and no significant natural resources impacted by the application. Uh, the structure is built, sits outside of the floodplain and riverfront areas protected by the state of Vermont and identified on the ANR Natural Resources Atlas. Um, and the remainder of the, the thousand plus or 2000 acres remain dedicated to agriculture and forestry purposes of which this, this actually continues to allow uh, and support. Um, and there's nothing that's going to affect either solar arrays or renewable energy. And as shown, in fact, there is a solar array next to the building um, and certainly room for more if Ms. Castrogren decided or any neighbor decided to install uh, solar or other renewable energy systems. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions for the applicant by members of the board? Barbara, did you have any questions? No, uh, I think, you know, I was concerned about what time that's going to close, but you've answered that, so uh, I'm okay. Good. Tom, did you have any additional comments? No, sir. Um, so, Dan, any further comments on your part? No, I, I think we've presented, and obviously if there's any questions about any of the materials, we're happy to answer. If there are no questions, are, are there questions? If there are no questions, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. But before we do that, I just wanted <laughs> to commend you, Dan. That was a very thorough application. Had Thank a lot you. of information. So that's probably why there are not a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a former DRB member down, down the hill from you guys uh, in Montpelier, I I know the value of uh, providing answers before the questions are asked. Yeah. <laughs> so I will move that we close the hearing. And I'll second. Motion been made and seconded to close the hearing. Uh, is there a discussion on that motion? No discussion. Then I would, uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Raise your hands if you would. Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is passed. Thank you. Uh, and the uh, hearing is closed. We thank you thank very much. You. For, thank, thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you thank for showing you. up. Um, hey, thank you, Christina. Thank you for your time, everyone. Yeah, and nice meeting you. I wish I wish you well with that, and I certainly hope to see it fully open again. Thank you. I appreciate yes. that. Yeah. Question, do we not get free samples? <laughs> <laughs> or that's, that's under the graphic corruption. Yeah, I was just going to say it. Right. A <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> um, so we have one other item of business tonight, and that is the minutes of... Um, Excuse me, Bob. Yes. So, yeah. if, if, for those that are attending, if, they, if you don't want to hear about our minutes, you, you're free to leave now. <laughs> yeah. so you know that... See you later and thank you everyone i'll talk to you tomorrow yeah, thank you only, everyone thank you yeah, it's the only matter we have remaining before the board tonight is the approval of the minutes of april 6th um although i do anticipate we might go into a little recession but we'll do that uh, afterwards uh so any any uh, is there a motion to accept the minutes of um april 6th so moved. Moved. Oh, okay Turb. but thank Turb. you Turb. yeah you moved. Polly, you second? <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> Discussion of that? Uh, there were nice brief minutes. Christy, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I, I, were I think it's first time, first time we've had a set of minutes on one page. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that great. meeting set a lot of records. So, <laughs> uh, so okay. All those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes of April 6th, please say by saying aye. 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 
minutes of April 6 are approved. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Chair, just one, one order of business. I, I just want to, to uh, since Christy's here as well, that uh, yesterday, uh, Pauly was named as a uh, permanent member of the uh, development review board. So she's no longer an alternate. Uh, so now there are two alternates, uh, Tour Nelson and Josh Fitzhugh. Thank you, Polly. Yes. Now we just need one more permanent member. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. That's true. Uh, I don't even know when people's terms expire. Um, <laughs> I, I tend to have a conversation with the select board. When a person's term expires, you basically re-advertise the position. There may be other people that want, uh, want to. Oh, that's a good idea. Want yeah. to be interested. Um, we, we've actually. We've actually done that. Have you? Yes, okay. through, through Front Porch Forum, we've done that. Yeah. Well, I didn't see the uh, position of um, uh, representative of the Regional Planning Commission and the Transportation Advisory Committee advertised. That's not on my radar. <laughs> That's an annual <laughs> position. <laughs> oh, really? Huh? Yeah. Interesting. I thought it was for life. Annual appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Thor. <laughs> Okay. Um, I is there, if there's anything, nothing I've missed here. I would obtain a motion to go into the deliberate session. Okay, so moved. <laughs> okay. Second. Seconded. Uh, discussion. All those in favor of going to deliberate session at this point in time, please say by saying aye. 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 I I need to move some folks around, Mr. Chair. Okay. Joining shortly, Mr. Chair. I thought for a minute, uh, Carly, you're going to have to chair tonight. Oh, oh, geez. Don't I tried say to that. Do, I tried to do myself in today. I, oh I no! Fell the back was hit my head on a pavement. Oh no, and, Bob. Yeah, that's my first thought was okay. You're standing up now, but will you be standing up in an hour from now? Oh my God! But I, I seem to be. Wow! Very, wow. To be, yeah, it was a. Kind of a dumb move. I was unloading some heavy equipment on the oh, back of my geez. truck. That's dangerous. Well, I got my second shot today, so I didn't know if I was going to be sick, but I feel okay. Great, great. Which would you have? The um, uh, <laughs> Pfizer? Pfizer. Pfizer, yeah. Yeah, we, we didn't have any reactions to the Pfizer ourselves. So no, I just yeah. I had a fairly mild reaction. So my son, my son, uh, who's turned 50 this year, he had a pretty significant reaction to. Real, yeah, because well, the younger people have better immune systems. <laughs> I didn't used to think that was younger. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> it clearly is. I just had my, I just had my birthday yesterday. Yeah. Happy so, birthday, Bob. Bob. Happy birthday. Bob, you should have Judy check your eyes just to make sure yes. you have a concussion. Uh, I, I told yeah, you have to stay awake all night or have to be woken up every two <laughs> hours or whatever it is. Yeah. 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 No. Trust me, you get to be my age, that happens anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Is there, any, tonight, is, there, anyway. is, there is there any other <laughs> real business to come before this board tonight? <laughs> uh, hearing none, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion was made by tour. Seconded by Polly. Um, all those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> the motion and the meeting is adjourned. And I thank you all very much for attending tonight. Yep. Good night. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good, night. Good night, everyone. Good night.